Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex, and this is Whiskey. I've got something to talk about with this one. But Never this sweat. is a gift from Tim Stoddard. Tim Stoddard, you magnificent bastard. Tim Stoddard. Tim Never Stoddard. Sweat. That's an interesting name. Never Well, because it's named after a mine that was called the Never Sweat Mine. Straight bourbon whiskey. Yeah. Okay. Now these guys, I've got full hey, look, disclosure. Look at old miner there. I know, right? Look at the old miner. I've got full disclosure. This is Head Frame Spirits. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a little ooh, I like quick that. background. Fork. Me too. Yeah. I'm going to give you a little bit quick background. About a year ago, after the Texas Whiskey Festival, I was hanging out with a good friend, uh, Reed Huddleston. Oh yeah. At Deep Elm. Now didn't he move recently well, over? He went up north. And uh, at, and the licorice, Robert Licorice and Marshall Licorice. Yeah. And we were at a bar with these other guys. He said, hey, we're from Head Frame Spirits okay. up in Montana. Right. That's these guys. Okay. It turns out they hired Reed. Oh. So Reed, a good friend of mine, now works for Head Frame. Sure. Uh, and he hasn't been there that long. How much did he have to do? About a year. Well, much, about six months. How much did he have to do with this? Probably not a lot. Okay. But uh, he just recently sent me three of their whiskeys and said, hey, I'm interested in your thoughts on this. This was one yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah. But this is not the bottle he sent. So we're coming now, off the heels of a Glenlivet on yeah. the nose. I'm getting dry. Yes, me too. Dry and slightly musty funk. Slightly. I'm getting some dry oakiness. Just some dry It's wood oak. heavy. Dry now, oak. I'm curious as to these guys. And I maybe, you know, in the getting, comments, yeah. we can get them to talk more about what they're doing. Sure. But they've... They make and sell stills in addition to being oh, a distillery. So they do whiskey and make it. Yes. Oh. And their stills they've created themselves are essentially a version of a column still okay. that they specifically designed for highest level of output possible so, and the most efficient stripping and stream. So it's column still. So column stills are already super efficient. It is, but I don't understand because I haven't really been able to figure it out online. What makes their column stills different than any normal column still? Right. But they do look very different, and they're all copper. Huh. Oh, copper. Yeah, it's just solid copper column. Okay. But, but it doesn't look like visually there's plate. Well, at least which, ones which I saw. isn't always the case. Right. Huh. Now, the more you go back to this on the nose, the sweet character does start to wake up a little bit. A little bit of honey and brown sugar. Get into those bourbon flavors. Yeah, it is more classic. Once it opens up a little bit, it gets more classic bourbon. But mm -hmm. it's still shiny and bright. Yeah. Oh, mixed with that slight dust musty note. Not incredibly dark color here. Pretty light in the color. It's a 40%. Yeah, it's a straight bourbon, right. and there's no age statement, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming... So, so Oh, no, two years. Age no less than two years. There it is. Okay, so the thing that was notable so far is the oak character that right. comes, comes across as like a dry oak on the nose. And it's corn rind wheat. No malt, evidently, in this. Oh. So the wheat's going to be the softness instead of the malt being the round flavor profile. Interesting. Oh, yeah. What is that? There's a almost a cola. It's it's sweetness almost like, to it. It's almost like the corn. The corn gets so. I think the corn layer is very dense. Yeah, and it's a, like the central kernel. Yeah, and then there's this little tinge you got around this, this like. Mm, you like have a, the corn sweetness, that corn character. It's it's like the dusty. Um, ah, it's like that dusty. Um, it's not agricultural. It's no, not it's not. It's but, not. But there's that dusty element. Oh, yeah. It's hard to explain. Yeah. And then you have, like, in that dry oak layer. There's multiple layers going on here. It's not just a one note whiskey. Mm. Which is good, because it means... It's still simple, but it's not boring. Mm. Uh, it means that as column stores are not stripping off all of the flavor I am, profiles. I am basically grading this on... The level of flavors, the amount of complexity I'm expecting from a 40% yes. ABV. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Because it is 40%. There's, there's this is, some, you see what I mean by cola, though? Imagine if you had a flat Coke. I, there's that rounded sugar, but then there's this little bit of a, like a jaw For curl. me, mostly after I sip and then I go back on the nose, I'm finding what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. You go back to the nose, it smells so woody. Mm -hmm. It does not taste woody at all. I'm getting some type of baking spice here. I don't think it's almost a cinnamon. Maybe between a cinnamon and a nutmeg? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I could see that in the nose. I'm, I'm really wishing that I could taste the wood tannin in the palate that I'm smelling on the nose. Because in the nose, it's this rich wood 
the it's, density. It's richer on the nose, but I do think the oakiness, there is an element of oakiness. I think if we did an AB mm -hmm. compared to just a classic 40% bourbon profile, I think in the AB, the amount of oak character in that's gonna be pretty, pretty obvious. Okay. On the long, if you swish it around like crazy in your mouth, yep. on the long aftertaste, it gets a little bit wood bitter. Uh, Rod Schaefer said, "Hey tribe, have a few people over. Have a few people over to sample three new whiskeys. What is a neutral snack that won't mess with the tasting too much? Water crackers. Yeah, that's very neutral, man. That's yeah, and neutral. I like it because they're not crumbly, bready. Yeah, they're a little bit more solid. Right. Saltines just dry your mouth out, and the salt starts." Uh, Basically, get an unsalted bread. Okay. Uh, it, French loaf is right. really great. You know, you know, I was having a, I was having a conversation over on at the distillery mm. a couple of weeks back. Uh, MB named Backroad Bob. Backroad Bob, right? and he is uh, he has a wine background, mm -hmm. very heavy wine background. He's getting into whiskey, and he had a recommendation for whiskey pairing because because he, he sees a lot of people doing pairing, and they think of whiskey as big alcohol, big proof, big right. flavors, blah blah blah. Uh, and they also go, and they usually try and pair that with something that they, in their mind, is equally also big. big. Right. He says one of the best pairings he's come across so far, and this is an acquired taste, pork rinds. It's a pork rind. Huh. Pork rinds have enough there. Right. Right. To to affect the complement the Weird. whiskeys that you're getting into. But it's not so overwhelming that you have this cacophony of flavors fighting with each other. That's interesting. Yeah, if you're into pork rinds, I've never they thought could. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a huge pork rind fan, but I'm, now I'm curious. Yeah. And yeah. kind of want to try it. Yeah. Do we want to compare this to like a generic 40% classic bourbon? I do. I want to do an AB for something that's right down the middle of the road. And then uh, we see how, because I do think there's quite a bit of oakiness on this, on this palette here. Don't be dropping stuff. Well, this is 43, but it's fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the, the one of the top sold whiskeys, which is just Evan Williams. Uh, I mean, other than Jack Daniels, yeah. Evan Williams is sure. incredibly highly sold. So if you're just going, quite frankly, I'm surprised they, the Jack Daniels people, let them get uh, away with the black and white lettering right, and the black and the square, and the square bottle, bottle and right. the, yeah. yeah, 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 they they are protective. Allegedly. So there's a much more honeyed sweetness in the nose now of the head frame when compared to Evan Williams. Evan Williams is way more musty and it's a dusty Evan's wood and dry. And vanilla. There's vanilla. And vanilla. Right. Yeah. Whereas the head frame is way more honey and floral all of a sudden. The head frame. You mean the never sweat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, head frame is the distillery. Oh. Oh wow, the cherry on that Evan Williams, man, on the taste. Yeah. Wow. Now, I'm without much of a pause, I'm gonna go straight back into Never Sweat. And the AB, that cherry just explodes in the Evan Williams. It's sweeter, mm -hmm. with a little bit of a little kick at the bready, end all of a sudden. It's like a bready baking spice. Remember, we added water to that one, and ah. I think it added a little bit of a pepper back end all yeah, of a sudden. Yeah. That tannin smell that I was getting on the nose yep. is slightly showing up in the palate now. Okay. Mikey Wynn, bottle is upstairs, glass is downstairs. It is, is it acceptable to swig from the bottle? Is it your bottle? No, I'm gonna say you've been in this situation because you got your bottles upstairs right. and the kitchen down. Right. Have you ever just been like, nah, screw it. But I only ever drink upstairs in my office. Yeah. Yeah. Like game in, watch yeah. movies, it's so. If it's your bottle, it's <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> If you ever plan on sharing it with somebody else, <laughs> this is a little bit timely. Maybe don't. <laughs> Which is why I don't. For safety. Yeah, for safety and science. I'm being safe. Yeah. It's for the benefit of other people, really. Yeah. Can I, can I guess? No, you, you, just, you don't want to do that. I do. This is a little bit simple for my tastes, and it's a little bit sweet for my taste. But again, I'm not really a bourbon guy, typically. Right. The, uh, they make a malt that I want, that Reed sent that I'm planning on trying uh, and I would really love to see how that goes down. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what these flavors did at higher proofs, mm -hmm. as usual. Yes. <laughs> it was 40, uh, with very few exceptions. It's 40, whenever we find flavors that we like, it's always just this kind of, uh, this this hankering, this pang of um, desire. The only thing I'm what missing. What those notes end up doing at a higher, higher alcohol proof. The only thing I'm missing is that mustiness, as I'm not a huge fan of how that, tinge of mustiness shows up on the nose at first. You get used to it, and now it's kind of gone. Yeah, man, the thing that's surprising me in this AB is how much 
of that cherry vanilla is, is inside Evan, the Evan Williams. Yeah. I mean, coming off the heels of something that we started off saying on the nose is pretty dry, right? Yeah. And then now on the nose of this, mm -hmm. wow, it's almost like a, just a candy, a candy melted sweets. syrupy vanilla yeah. cherry. Absolutely. Yeah, right on. All right, here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal me, you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. <laughs>